Electromagnetic radiation includes waves everywhere in the universe that are part of what's called the electromagnetic or EM spectrum. So all these waves were listed earlier, um, and these this listing of waves, gamma rays, X rays, UV, and so on, this is listing them from high energy, gamma rays being the highest energy in the electromagnetic spectrum, down to radio waves being the lowest energy in the electromagnetic spectrum that we're usually presented with, this being the entire spectrum. So all these types of radiation are different to us. We know an X-ray is not the same as a radio wave, uh, that you can't see these radio waves that are passing through the atmosphere and allow us to have radio signals on the radio and you can hear those. But we know that microwaves are pretty different. Um, and we also know that visible light is very different. It's actually this very narrow slice, this gray slice of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. It's called visible light because this is the only wave that we can see, these types of waves that are visible light. Okay, so these all are different to our senses. Visible light we can see. We can't see any of these other ones. Okay, infrared or IR we can feel because that's heat. Um, that's a radiant energy, and um, we can't feel any of those other ones as heat either. And UV, we can't see or feel, but we must protect ourselves from. So this, uh, these are various types of right, radiation, and the way they differ, you can see on the spot below this, is indicating the wavelength in meters. So this is that wavelength symbol, that's called lambda, the upside down y. The units are meters, and these could all be uh, have a metric prefix attached, like 10 to the minus 12, this would be your picometer. Or in here would be, x-rays would be 10 to the minus 9, that would be a nanometer. Um, we can see that wavelength of visible light, these are listed as nanometers because it's to the 400s or 700s, so that you can put this in nanometers and then add a couple extra powers of 10. So this would be nanometers, 10 to the minus 9. But you could also sneak in here visible light is 10 to the minus 6, uh, so that could also be micrometers. Or um, we have microwaves, this is 10 to the minus 2, that could be presented as centimeters using that metric prefix. And radio waves, 10 squared, could be presented as hectometers for the units. So how these are all different is that they have different wavelength values and therefore also different frequency values because remember wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional. So with a high um, frequency, you can see a lot of these waves passing through, has a low wavelength, there's a small distance between those peaks. Or something with a uh, high wavelength, there's a big distance between the radio wave peaks here, this would have a low frequency. So inversely proportional between wavelength and frequency. What do these waves all have in common? Well, they all represent energy. Wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional. This is because of this equation, which relates wavelength and frequency. When you multiply them together, they're both on the side of the equal sign multiplied together. They're always equal to this constant, which is represented by C that is equal to the, what's called the speed of light. So this is a constant in the universe. The speed of light is this value, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So that's m over s, meters per second. And when you have two things multiplied together, in this case, wavelength and frequency, two things multiplied always equal to the same number. That's why you have an, this inverse proportionality. In order, if this one is a high value, then this other one has to be a low value if they're always multiplied together to the same number. Another equation we'll be using is calculating the energy, or E, this is uppercase E, representing energy of electromagnetic radiation. Now one term here to add is photon. Photon is basically a packet or a unit of energy. And it was first defined by Einstein, we'll talk about him a little bit more later. But this is thinking about energy as waves, but you can also think about energy as particles or packets, which are called photons. Okay, so in general, though, we can talk about energy with this calculation where you have energy is equal to 
frequency, this is that symbol for frequency, that Greek symbol nu, multiplied by this h. h represents a constant called Planck's constant. That's a number value, just like c, the speed of light, is a number value. It's a constant. This is also a constant. This constant value represents 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. Um, negative 34 means there's 34 zeros in front of that, yeah, and you move the decimal. And that means it's a very small number, this Planck's constant. So this is in units of J. This represents joules. That's a unit of energy. And multiplied by seconds. Joules times seconds are the units of this constant. Why this is important is that this very small number, H, when you multiply it by frequency, is equal to energy. So what this equation is representing is another proportionality. This time, energy is on this side of the equal sign, and frequency is on this side of the equal sign. Energy is basically equal to frequency because you multiply the small number to it, and so this is more that they're directly proportional. Energy and frequency are directly proportional. So there are relationships that are represented by these equations, which are frequency to wavelength and energy to frequency. Energy and frequency directly proportional, wavelength and frequency inversely proportional. So we'll also use these equations for calculations, like any equations. You don't have to memorize them, you just need to know how to use them. Same with the constants, you don't need to memorize them, you just need to know how to use them and where to find them. Let's put these equations to work in this worksheet now.